Welcome to lecture 30. We're getting really close to the last section. So 5.4, systems of nonlinear systems equations in two variables. That should actually just say systems of nonlinear equations in two variables. So hopefully I have edited that for you. All right, so we have a question. What are some of the nonlinear equations we have seen so far in this course? Well, nonlinear, Remember, linear would just have x and y to the 1 power, right? So that's linear. What's a nonlinear one we've seen? Well, we've been working with um, exponential, right? So we had like 3 to the x equals y, maybe. Or we had quadratic, so x squared plus 3x plus 4 equals 0, maybe. What's another kind of equation we've seen? We've seen circles, right? x squared plus y squared equals 4. We've seen logarithmic log base 3 of x equals 4 maybe. Those are a few of the ones we've seen. So we are now going to look at systems with these equations in them. Well, not all of them. We won't be working with logs and normally not exponential. But quadratic and circles, those are definitely something we might be seeing. So we solve nonlinear systems of equations very much like how we solve linear systems of equations, which we've been working on with the following. So substitution or elimination. Alright, so once again we have a type 1 and a type 2 and it's really important to be able to recognize which is the type you're working with because your strategy will change. Okay, so the type 1. When two nonlinear equations are the same type of equation, what do I mean by that? Well, if they're both equations of a circle or if they're both equations of a parabola. Then we will use elimination. And you need to check your solutions. So we're going to go ahead and solve the following system of nonlinear equations. First off, how do I know these are nonlinear? Well, notice we have a y squared going on. We also have an x times y. These are not linear equations. But the plan pretty much is the same. So I'll ask myself, are these two the exact same type of equation? Well, let's look at the variables. Both of them have an x, y, and they both have a y squared. So yeah, they're the same type of equation. So because of this, they fall into the type 1 category, which means we'll use elimination. And it works pretty much the exact same way we've been doing elimination before. We're going to focus on the numbers in front of the variables and decide which one to cancel. Well, I'm going to go ahead and try to cancel out the x, y's. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply the bottom by 2 to match with the 4xy in the top equation. So we're going to try and match the x, y. And then rewriting the top equation, we haven't done anything to it. And then I'll rewrite the bottom, which we multiplied by 2. Okay. Now, should we add or subtract these to cancel out the x, y? Well, they're both positive 4, so we're going to go ahead and subtract. And I'm going to um, ask that you make sure to put the symbol on the side that you're using, either the subtraction or the addition. So I've put the subtraction symbol on the side. This lets me know, or lets you know, what I'm doing. They'll subtract away, and then we have 3 minus 2y. That'll be y squared equals, and then negative 9 minus 10. Well, negative 9 minus negative 10. So negative 9 plus 10, which is just 1. And I'll go ahead and erase that. If I was to leave that somewhere, make sure to label it with scratch work. So we're just left with a positive 1. Now we have a, a squared going on. So we're going to go ahead and square root both sides plus or minus, and we get y equals plus or minus the square root of 1, which is just 1. Oh, now how interesting is that? We have two answers for y. y equals 1 and y equals negative 1, which means we're going to get two possible answers for x. So this is where things get a little strange with nonlinear systems. So actually, let me check this out. Now we're going to solve for, what's the other variable? x. So we'll solve for x, but we actually have two cases. We have when y equals 1, 
and the other case when y equals negative 1. And which equation should I use? I'll go ahead and use the bottom equation to solve for x. Why? Because it just has the smallest numbers in front of it. Okay. We have 2x times the 1 for y plus, and we're going to substitute y in. So remember, just uh, we're substituting in the 1 for y. Then we get 2x plus 1 equals negative 5. 2x equals negative 6, and x equals negative 3. I box them here just so I can find them, but remember in the end, unless we're working with a word problem, your answer should be in coordinate form. And then next we're going to go 2x times, and this time we're using a negative 1, because we found two answers for y. So then I get negative 2x plus 1 equals negative 5, negative 2x equals negative 6, then x equals positive 3 this time. So you have to be careful. Remember, an x or one of the y's came with one of the x's. But because we're working with a square and we're taking a square root here, we need to make sure to check that our answers actually work. So let's go ahead and check our answers. And we'll check them in the pairs. So we have one pair, which is from the first grouping. Let me go ahead and highlight them. 1, negative 3. So let's go ahead and do that. That was negative 3 and 1. And then we're going to check the other pair, which is negative 1 and 3. Let me actually, wait, I'm going to change the color there. All right, 3 and negative 1. So we're going to go ahead and check that these work. We can use either of the original equations. I'm going to go ahead and just use the same one I used previously, just because it's smaller. So, when you're checking, remember, we're not moving things around. We're just checking that one side equals the other side. So, we want to check that 2xy, sorry, yeah, 2xy plus y squared. We want to see if this ends up equaling 5, or negative 5 in this case. And we're going to check the exact same thing with the other answers. Well, okay, let's see. When we plug them in, we're going to get 2xy and then y squared. We want to see if this ends up equaling negative 5. So 3, 1, 1. Actually, let me change the color. I want to go with red, since that's what I used previously. So that'll be negative 6 plus 1, which is negative 5. And hey, that is right. These two are equal. Awesome. So we know that negative 3, 1 is part of our solution. And I'll go ahead and let the reader know these are my answers. Let's check the other side. So we have 2 times xy plus y squared, and we want to make sure this equals negative, uh, sorry, yeah, negative 5. Let me go ahead and erase that so I get more space for my writing. Okay, my pen was glitching for a sec there. All right. And now plugging in the 3 and the negative 1. So 3, negative 1, negative 1. Then we get negative 6 plus 1, and that equals negative 5. Hey, what do you know? They both work. So we get 3, negative 1 as our answers. And there we go. All right, so when do we use elimination for nonlinears? That's if they're the exact same type of equation. But the question is, what if they aren't the same? Well, that brings up type 2. So when the two nonlinear equations are a different type of equation, we will use substitution. It is easiest to substitute the lower power equation into the higher power equation. And you need to check your solutions. So what do I mean by lower power versus higher power? Well, if I had something like x squared plus y squared equals 4, and then maybe xy equals 5, I would go ahead and sub this one into the other one, because that has an x squared and a y squared. Just a rule of thumb. Substitute the lower one into the higher power. It just normally gives you less answers to check. So now let's take a look at our example here, example 2. Solve the following system of nonlinear equations. Well, if I wasn't told they were nonlinear, would I be able to tell? Would you be able to tell? 
spend a second trying to decide how we know that these are nonlinear or not. Well, actually, there's a bit of a white line in this. This equation down at the bottom, this is actually a linear equation. But it's not considered a linear system. Why? Because we have this one up here, which is a circle. Okay? So even if there is a linear in the equation or in the system, it's not considered linear. They all have to be linear to be considered a linear system. So because we have that y squared plus x squared, it's considered nonlinear. Now what is our plan? Elimination or substitution? Well, if they are both the same type of equation, we would use elimination. But remember, this is quadratic, and this is linear. So how are we going to solve this? Well, we're going to sub the lower power into the higher power. Think of the lower power people serve the higher power people. Nah. Any way to remember it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and sub that into there, which means we needed to set it up for um, substitution. So setting this up for substitution, we could solve for either variable. I'll go ahead and solve for y. That's just personal um, choice there. Okay, so we went ahead and solved for that. So now we're going to sub y equals 5 minus 2x into the circle equation. Okay, so we're subbing that in for y. There's y, and it's going to equal 5 minus 2x. Our goal is to always get one equation in one variable. Let me write that down. Goal. Get one equation in one variable. It's not possible to solve one equation that has two variables. Alright. So then we'll have x squared plus, and y squared now is 5 minus 2x equals 50. And careful, that is a square, which means we're going to have to FOIL that out. Once again, please note, this is not equal to 5 squared minus 2x squared. Those are not the same thing. Please do not do that. This is equal to 5 minus 2x times 5 minus 2x. That is one big humbalala. Do not do that. All right. Let's go ahead and factor this out. So we'll end up with 5 minus 2x times 5 minus 2x equals 50. You get x squared plus 25 uh, minus 10x minus 10x plus 4x squared equals 50. So combining like terms, we'll get x squared and x squared, and then the x and the x. So 5x squared minus 20x plus 25 equals 50. Let's subtract the 50 from both sides to get this equal to 0 because it's quadratic. Ooh, and we could try factor it now, but notice these are all divisible by 5. And if you can simplify something, simplify it. Make your life easier. Okay, this simplifies 2x squared minus 4x minus 5 equals 0. And so, um, sorry, that it simplified to that. Uh, factoring this, we'll do negative 5, x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 5 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0. And real quick, I'm going to take the time to mention something I was noticing on some exams. Notice, where are the equal signs? I'm going to go ahead and mark my paper here. The equal signs are all sort of in the middle going on down here, right? which means we don't need to include equal signs down along the side here. That would be if this was an expression. We do not need them there. And if they were written on the exam, I did take a point off for that. So please remember, if you are given an equation, the equal sign is in the middle, and it will stay there. Expressions are when you include the equal signs along the side. Alrighty, so got that cleared up. Now we have x equals 5. Ooh, 2 two options for the answers. Once again, we're going to have to do work for two different answers. 
So now what are we trying to solve for? Well, we found x, which means we now want to find y. So we want to find y. And as you can notice, I label what I'm doing in my work. It's good to let the other people who are reading know what you're doing. So for finding y, we have two options, x equal to 5 and x equal to negative 1. So for x equal to 5, and then x equal to negative 1. Which equation should we use? You could use either one. I'm going to go ahead and use the one we simplified for substitution. That one right there. You could use one of the top two. That would be fine to use either one of these if you wanted to. I'm just going to use the simpler one. Less to work with. I don't like working with those squares. Because that usually ends up giving you more answers than you need. And remember, you need to check your answers. If we worked with one of the square ones, we'd have to do square root, which means one of the answers might be extraneous. But if you want to try that out and see how it works, totally go for it. All right, so now we have y equals 5 minus 2 times, and we're subbing in the 5 for 2. Sorry, 5 for x. Don't know where that 2 came from. Okay, minus 10, y equals negative 5. So we have the point 5, negative 5. And we're going to have to check that. And then let's do the other one for x. y equals 5 minus 2 times, negative 1. So y equals 5 plus 2, y equals 7. And then we get the point, negative 1, 7. But remember, we need to check these. So we'll go ahead and check. So we're checking the point 5, negative 5, and negative 1, 7. Definitely, there gets to be a lot more work with systems. So making sure your work is neat and labeled. Labeled is probably one of the best things to do. And partitioning things off definitely helps your readers and helps you keep track of your work. All right, so checking this, we just need to pick, um, all right, so let's go ahead and check. Uh, so checking the x squared plus y squared equals 50, we'll get, so x squared plus y squared, does that equal 50? We have the 5 squared plus the negative 5 squared, which does indeed equal 50. So let me do that. Actually, let's do that a teeny bit more. Let's do a little bit more work. And then we check the other one. That would be the 2x. Let's see. That would be the 2x plus y equals 5. We'll get 2 times the 5 plus the negative 5. That'll be 10 minus 5, which is indeed 5. So that also works. Now, the 1, 7. So first, we'll go ahead and check the x squared plus y squared. Is that equal to 50? Well, we'll have the negative 1 squared plus 7 squared. So it'll be 1 plus 49, which is 50. Awesome. And checking the second equation. Once again, the reason we check the... Um, the equations for this is because of the squares going on with equations, which means you'll do some square rootings. Okay, so always keep that in mind. So then we have 2 times the negative 1 plus 7. That'll be negative 2 plus 7, which is going to be 5. Eh, they check out. All right, so our answers do indeed check out, which means I can go ahead and circle them as my answers. Or box them. Circle or box. Either one works. Okay. All right, so let's see. Now we have another one. So solve the following system of nonlinear equations. How do we know this is nonlinear? Well, there's one sort of glaringly noticeable feature is that square root. And then, of course, we also have the regular x squared and y squared, which would be the equation of a circle. Okay, so we've identified these are nonlinear. The next question is, which type is it, type 1 or type 2? If, it's, if they're the same kind of equation, it's a type 1, which means we'll use elimination. If they're a different type of equation, we'll use substitution. 
these two are different. So we're going to sub the lower power one into the higher power one, which means we'll be subbing this guy into the next one. All right, so y equals square root x. Actually, that's already solved for one variable. So I'm going to go ahead and just sub that in. So sub y equals root x into other equation. So we have x squared plus, and we're subbing that into the y squared. So square root of x, ooh, square roots cancel. And we're left with x squared plus x equals 90. Hey, look, that looks quadratic. Minus the 90 from both sides. And we get x squared plus x minus 90 equals 0. Factoring, we'll get x plus 10 x minus 9 equals 0, x plus 10 equals 0, x minus 9 equals 0, x equals negative 10, x equals 9. Whew! Hey, now we have two answers for x again. Uh, definitely a little more work for us. Okay, so now we're going to find what other variable? We need to find y. Y. Okay. And... Setting up to check both of them. So, so for x equals negative 10. And for x equals 9. So now we have which equation should we use? Well, I'll go ahead with the simplest one, which is the y equals the square root of x. So for the square root of x, we'll get y equals, and we're substituting into the square root, negative 10. Oh, wait. That's not a real number. The square root of negative 10 isn't a real number. All right, well, that doesn't work. So we'll go ahead and say no real solution, or n not a real number, which means that that value does not give us an answer. So let's check the other one. So now we have y equals the square root of x. We're solving for that. So y equals the square root of 9. And we get y equals 3. All right, so we have a candidate for an answer. The other one didn't quite cut it. So our candidate is 9, 3. We're going to go ahead and check that this checks out. But first off, does it make sense that we only had one answer? Well, if you want to, you can always go to desmos.com. I'll go ahead and write this down right here. Desmos.com to check these solutions. But the x squared plus y squared equals 90 is a circle. So I'm going to do a very rough graph. The x squared plus y squared equals 90. I'll go ahead and graph that. It's a circle. And then the y equals the square root of x you don't really need to know the graph for this one, is half of a parabola tilted on its side. So it looks something like this. That's the blue graph. So notice, how many solutions would there be? There would only be one. So graphically, this makes sense why one of the solutions canceled out. Okay, so let's go ahead and check the one that we think is work or works, 9, 3. We'll go ahead and check it in both equations. Why are we checking it in both equations? Because things are starting to get fancy with the radicals and the squares, it's really good to check both equations. So we'll check y equals square root of x. All right, so once again, we're not moving things around. We just want y and the square root of x. So y is 3, x is 9. Does 3 equal square root of 9, which is 3? Yep, checks out. Awesome. So that works. Now we're going to go ahead and check it on the other equation. x squared plus y squared equals 90. Actually, we put that question mark right there. Okay, so once again, checking away. We're going to plug in the 9 for the x and the 3 for the y. We'll get 81 plus 9. And that's going to come out to be 81 plus 9. Hey, that is 90. 90 equals 90. Check. All right, our answer checks out. 
So our answer, the work is really not that neat. Probably better to write that at the very bottom, but if you state answer and you nicely box your equation, I'll be able to find your answer. Alrighty, and that is it for this section. We don't cover objective three in Math 103. Once again, if you have any questions, please send me an email. But as always, it's important to be able to notice if you're working with a type one or a type two nonlinear system. That helps you know which method to use.